Hello viewers and welcome to my channel and today's topic is speech disorders but before starting this topic I would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel and if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com you know and uh, to subscribe uh, and to visit the website you can click the link in the description area which is just below this video and uh, uh, if you wish to subscribe this channel, uh, the subscribe button is also just below this video. You know. I come to the topic speech disorders, you know. You know, speech disorders can often uh, affect the way a person creates sounds to form the words, you know. And uh, certain voice disorders may also be considered speech disorders. And one of the most common uh, experienced speech disorder is like uh, stuttering, you know. And other speech disorders uh, include like uh, uh, apraxia, you know, and uh, like uh, dysarthria, you know. You know, apraxia is. Uh, a, it's a motor speech uh, disorder which is caused by damage to the parts of the brain which uh, related to the speaking you know. and dysarthria uh, uh, is uh, a motor speech disorder in which the muscles of the mouth face and the respiratory system may become weak or have the difficulty in moving properly you know. okay so these are the two types of speech disorders you know and uh, some people with the speech disorders are aware of what they would like to say but uh, they are unable to articulate their thoughts you know and they may lead to like uh, self-esteem issues you know and the development of uh, uh, depression you know and the speech disorders can affect adults and the children and early treatment can correct these conditions you know but the next thing what are the causes of the speech disorders well the speech disorders affect the vocal cords the muscles the nerves and the other structures within the throat you know and the causes may include like uh, vocal cord damage or maybe brain damage or muscle weakness or, uh, or respiratory issues you know uh, weakness you know and uh, strokes uh, polyps are the nodules on the uh, vocal cords you know uh, vocal cord paralysis uh, so these are the common causes you know and the people who have a certain medical and the developmental conditions uh, uh, may also have the speech disorders and the common conditions that can lead to the speech disorders may include like uh, autism you know or the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder you know or it's known as ADHD you know strokes or oral cancers or laryngeal cancers you know or maybe Huntington's disease or dementia and uh, like uh, uh, low Gehrig's disease you know which is also known as uh, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS you know so these are the common uh, medical conditions which can cause the speech disorders you know and the speech disorders may be uh, may run in families you know and uh, they can develop over the time you know and uh, the next thing what are the symptoms you know depending on the cause of the speech disorder the several symptoms may be present you know And you know the most common symptoms uh, experienced by the people with the speech disorder are uh, repeating sounds, you know, which is the the most often seen in the people who stutter, you know, and uh, adding extra sounds in the words, you know, or elongating the words, or uh, making jerky movements while talking, usually involving the head, you know, or maybe blinking several times while talking are visible like uh, a frustration when you're trying to communicate you know and taking frequent pauses when talking and uh, like distorting sounds when talking or hoarseness or maybe uh, speaking with uh, like uh, raspy or uh, gravely sound voices you know so these are the common signs and the symptoms of the uh, speech disorders and the next thing is how do doctors diagnose that uh, uh, 
you have the speech disorder and what's the type of that speech disorder you know you know there are many tests which are available to diagnose the speech disorders so the number one is like a, a Denver articulation screening exam okay so it's a commonly used uh, test to diagnose the articulation disorders and this test evaluates uh, like uh, uh, the clarity in the pronunciation in children between the ages of uh, two and seven years and uh, this is five minute test it uses various exercises to assess the children's speech you know and uh, the other one is like uh, early language milestone scale too so which means that this test uh, which is created by uh, like uh, neurodevelopmental pediatrician uh, his name was james uh, uh, kaplan you know so it determines a child's language development and this test may uh, quickly identify the delayed speech or the language problems you know the language dis uh, disorders you know and the other test is like uh, uh, a p body picture vocabulary test okay so what does the mean is this test measures a person's vocabulary and the ability to speak and uh, the person will listen to various words and choose the pictures that uh, describe the words you know and the people who have severe intellectual disabilities and uh, those who are blind they won't be able to take a, a part into this assessment you know and uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, a Peabody picture vocabulary test has uh, been revised many times since uh, its first version, you know, was uh, introduced in 1959. So it has been revised now, you know, it's more modified, you know. Now once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options? You know, mild speech disorders, uh, usually they don't need any treatment, you know. And some speech disorders may simply go away on their own, you know, without any treatment. And other can improve with the speech therapy. And the treatment uh, uh, depends on the type of the disorder and the severity, you know. And uh, in speech uh, therapy, you know, the professional therapist will guide you through the exercises that work to strengthen the muscles in your face and in your throat, you know. And uh, you will learn to control your uh, breathing while speaking. And the muscle strengthening exercises and the controlled breathing, it helped to improve the way your words sound, you know. And you will learn the way to practice like uh, smoother and more fluent speech, you know. It's helpful, you know. And some people uh, with the speech disorders experience like uh, nervousness, you know, maybe embarrassment or uh, like depression, you know. And in that case, you uh, talk therapy may be helpful in these situations, you know. And the therapist will uh, discuss the ways to cope with these situations you know, and the conditions and to improve the outlook of your condition you know and uh, if uh, your depression is severe then the antidepressants uh, medications can also uh, be helpful you know well the untreated speech disorder may cause uh, a person to experience a great deal of anxiety you know or depression you know and over the time, this anxiety can trigger the anxiety disorders or the phobias and the um, phobia of speaking in the public, you know. And the early treatment uh, can help prevent the development of anxiety and uh, the disorders or, or the phobias, you know. And the treatment options may include talk therapy and maybe anti-anxiety medications, you know. And the outlook improves for the people who seek early treatment, you know. And uh, early treatment helps to prevent a speech disorder from worsening. So it's very important that you start the treatment at early stage, you know, for the better outcome. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to subscribe this channel for more information about the diseases or medical conditions or the medicines, you know. And if you have any question, you can just uh, leave the message or the question in the comment box and I will try to answer those questions. Thank you very much. Goodbye.